So glad to see you in the house of God. Let's give God some praise. Come on, we're declaring war on the enemy. We're shining light in this dark world. You know, I'm so glad to see every one of you here representing God and worshiping God this Sunday morning. For those of you at home, get ready because we are getting ready as a church to take over more territory than we ever have. And when we're talking about territory, we're here as a, on an assignment to reach people for Jesus. And if the church doesn't do it, there's no one else that's going to do it. How many understand that? And we've been in a lot of warfare. And, you know, even in this last two weeks, I've seen, you know, three or four young men that have passed away. You know, we had um, one of our ushers that's been with us from the beginning. His son, Alex, just got in a car accident two days ago. And I guess it was a head-on collision. He was getting ready to go to his dad's house. He passed away. Another young man, you know, his, his father comes to our church, and, and he got a heart attack at 29 years old. Another young man, uh, one, of the, one of the sons of an usher, um, got shot on, on the 210 freeway. Another young man this week um, got stabbed and killed. You know, so we've seen four young men under the age of 20 years old, I mean, under the age of 30 years old in their early 20s that have passed away, associated and connected to members of our church. All this means is that we're in real warfare and the church has to open up. We're not talking about marriages that are failing and struggling. People are depressed, they're suicidal, and, and just because churches have taken breaks, the devil has not taken a break. And why are we coming back together right now? It's only because God told us to come back together. That's why we're coming back together right now. So we're coming back together in faith right now, and we're coming back together in confidence. Where our faith is in God, and, and when we, I've learned this, when we do God's will, there's protection in God's will. How many understand that? When we do God's will, there's protection in God's will. And we're in God's will right now, and, and we're going to, today, people are going to get saved. People are going to get set free. People are going to get healed. People are going to get delivered today. Today's going to be a day of miracles right here, right now in this place. Do we serve a God that's bigger and is above every single name that's out there? Jesus' name is above every single name. Whatever we're facing today, Jesus' name is bigger than that. So what I want to do is I'm, we're going to go ahead and continue a series that we started. And the series that we started is, is God unleashing his power through the church. And the first week we covered this, that the church is the body of Christ. And all it means is if God's going to do anything, if Jesus is going to heal someone, if Jesus is going to encourage someone, if Jesus is going to touch someone, he's going to do it through his body. We are the body of Christ. Christ is still moving. Christ is still doing ministry, but he's doing it through his church. He's doing it through every single one of us. So today, Jesus wants to comfort someone, and he's going to do it through the power of his Holy Spirit through a believer like you and I. How many understand that? And number two, we covered that the church is an army. That, you know, one of the names of the Lord is the Lord of Heaven's Army. Armies. And the scripture describes the army. It consists of two groups. It's angels and believers. And Jesus doesn't do anything without his army. Anytime he goes to battle... He goes to battle with his army. That means that right now we're in a war. We're in a spiritual war for souls. We're in a spiritual war against darkness. And if the church doesn't fight, we're the only entity, the only group on earth that's been left here to fight against demonic strategies and struggles and oppression. How many get that? If the church does not fight, everyone's lost for eternity. So today what I want to talk to you about, I want to talk to you about God unleashing his power through the church. And I want to talk about the church 
was built for this. Say, say it with me. We were built for this. The church was built, and it wasn't built by human beings. It was built by God himself. So let's go ahead and look. At, I'm going to give you three things the church was built for. Number one, the church was built to conquer and not be conquered. Say with me. The church was built to, be, to conquer and not be conquered. Look at Matthew 16, 18. It says, now I say to you. Now, that, now, now I say to you that you are Peter, which means rock, and upon this rock I will build my church and all the powers of hell will not conquer it. See, the church was created to conquer and not be conquered. Whatever we're facing right now, Jesus said, I will build my church and all the powers of hell that even try to come against the church it will not be able to conquer the church. It will not be able to overcome the church. It will not be able to subdue the church. It will not be able to, it will not be able to be victorious of the church. What the scripture is saying is we will be victorious. And that means whatever we're facing right now in this world, God has created a church that can fight against every single principality and power and ruler of darkness that we're facing today. We're not created, we were not built to be conquered, we are built to conquer. Don't ever say that what you're going through is too much. It's not too much because you were built for the very battle that you're in right now. God will never give us more than we can handle. God has built a victorious church and in this season we're going to rise up and be the victorious church that God has called us to be. We've been called, we were called, we've been built for this. See, we are in a spiritual war against a real enemy. And we'll never be victorious if we don't even know we're in a spiritual war. See, the only army that God has left on this earth to fight against Satan's lies, deception, bondage, torment, hate, Darkness, oppression, poverty, hopelessness, addiction, abuse, perversion, pain, generational curses is Jesus' army, the church. In, Ecclesiastes, I mean, in Ephesians 6.12 it says this, for we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies. You know what the scripture is saying? We're not fighting against people. How many get that? You know why it's important for you to understand that you're not fighting against people? Because we are usually fighting against people. We're usually arguing against people, and, and, if, and if you ask the majority of a people, who's your number one enemy, they're going to mention people. They might mention their husband. They might mention their wife. They might mention their crazy neighbor. They might mention their boss that they're having a hard time with. I wonder who you're calling your enemy, and God is saying you're fighting at a low level because you're not fighting, but... You're not fighting the real enemy. The real enemy is not that person. The real enemy is a spiritual enemy. Let's learn how to fight a spiritual battle. And the scripture says, but this is what it says, for we're not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world, against evil spirits in heavenly places. Just think about that. So the depression is more than a feeling. Many times it's a spirit. The addiction is more than a bad habit. Many times it's a spiritual slavery. And you might be trying to overcome it by a program, and you need not a program, you need a power. You know, maybe your marriage problem is more than you guys need, just need counseling. Maybe there's a spirit of division and divorce that has been passed on from one generation to the next generation. And if you don't fight it in the spirit, you're not going to overcome it. Maybe right now you don't need, you've been thinking, I need a drink. And you don't need a drink to overcome your anxiety and the pressure. You need a move of God's spirit upon your life. What your spirit, what you're experiencing, maybe it's a spirit of anxiety and fear that's overwhelming you. But I got good news for you. Not by might, nor by power, 
but by my spirit, saith the Lord. Come on, it's time to gain some spiritual victories. We're not fighting against flesh and blood. We are fighting against principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, spiritual wickedness in high places. But we got good news. We've been built for this battle. And the battle that we're in, we are conquerors. You know what we're doing right now? Building our faith again. Because there's, even in this time of COVID, it's almost like we got to fight against a COVID mentality that gets you scared about everything. Someone coughs and you're running. You used to be a gangster. They used to pull a gun on you and say, what, well, shoot, shoot, what's up, what? Now someone coughs and you're like, run, oh my God. COVID. <laughs> what happened to your faith? What happened by laying your hands on the sick and to recover? What happened to casting out spirits in the name of Jesus? What happened with the devils underneath your feet? What happened? No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Where did it go? Well, Pastor, you got to be careful. I understand we got to be careful, but not so careful that we've lost our authority. Not so careful that we've lost our faith. Not so careful that we're running from a battle we should be running to. How many are with me? If you're not with me quite yet, that's why we're preaching. So it gets you with us. Amen. Come on. Right? It's just, I know because we're just seeing it all around us. And all we hear is the bad news. People are dying. Everybody has COVID. Everybody doesn't have COVID. No one in here has COVID, a matter of fact. What are the chances, what are the chances of you dying of COVID? What are the chances of you dying of COVID? One in 19 million. It's not even that high. I'll take my chances. One in 19 million. You got a better chance of dying just driving your car out of here. You know how many people are in the hospital in California because of COVID? Only 600 people in the whole California. But all we hear is the bad news. I'm not trying to downplay COVID, but I'm not trying to upplay it either. I just want to call it what it is, and we serve a God. Come on, we've been created, to, we've been created for this battle. We've been created to fight against this thing. It's time for the church to arise. We're coming out of our caves, and we're worshiping God. Pandemics ain't nothing new. They had them in Jesus' day, too. I think that's a wrap. Pandemics ain't nothing new. They had them in Jesus' times, too. Pandemics ain't nothing new. They had them in Jesus' times, too. That sounds like a rave song right there. And all the, all the young people, oh, pandemics ain't something new. They had him in Jesus' time, too. <laughs> but you know what they were called then? Leprosy. Now, leprosy was some serious stuff. Because leprosy will attach itself to clothes. Like if you had leprosy and you slept in it, the leprosy would attach to the clothes and the, and the, and, and the, and the covers. And if it touched you, you'd get it. And, and the thing with leprosy, it was chronic. There was no cure. And the other thing with leprosy, it'll make you ugly. What I mean by that is when you got leprosy, everybody knew it. Some people have COVID. We don't even know. They're undercover cold. They're undercover cold. They're co 19 undercover. Right? But you had leprosy. I, I don't got no leprosy. Why is your hand falling off, foe? What's all that stuff on your face? <laughs> I don't know. Just a bad day. <laughs> Give me a hug. No, I ain't giving you no hug. You crazy. But Jesus said this about that. He said, he said this. He said, you'll proclaim 
my gospel throughout the world. He said that you'll lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. He said that you'll cleanse the leper. He said that you'll cast out demons. He said that you'd be the head and not the tail. He said that the devil would be underneath your feet. He said it all. And he says, when you go in my name and my power, you don't need to fear no leprosy because I conquered that too. That leprosy isn't going to come upon you. The healing on you is going to come upon them. Come on, give God some praise. It's the same Bible. It's the same Bible. It's the same God. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. It's time for us to open up those pages and believe the Word of God again. We're built for this. Someone's waking up right now like, what? I didn't even know that. CNN be lying to me all this time. <laughs> See, some of, some of you have become disciples of COVID. Like, you know more about COVID-19 than you know more about than Philippians 3.19. I'm back ready, man. I'm coming back ready to fight. Come on. I'm ready. I'm coming back ready to declare war. I'm coming back for an army that God has created to fight against the darkness in this world. We got to get our identity back. It's like the devil's trying to re identify us because. What you call it is what it is. If you see yourself defeated as a man thinking, so is he. We're done. There's no more hope. That's where your life's going to be then. It's not the, that's your false reality. There all, there's always hope. I don't care how bad things are, you can overcome. I don't care what bad news you've, come on, you've received, you can overcome. Your best days are still ahead of you. Stop allowing the devil to redefine you. I, I ran to a guy yesterday. I was at Cal State San Bernardino just studying, praying, and I walked by a person at Cal State. School's closed, but he was there. So I, I walked by him, and the Holy Spirit says, go back. So I went back. I was almost not going to go back. <laughs> I went back. They go, hey, what's up? How you doing? He goes, what? He's not like, he was a gang member. He was, as a matter of fact, as I, as I talked to him, he was part of the Mexi Mexican mafia. His whole family was. And I talked to him, and I, um, I go, what's your name? He gave, me, he gave me his real name, and then he gave me his demonic name. He goes, my name's. My name's Alex. He goes, but they call me Diablo. Orale pues, homie. <laughs> and, and I wonder, I wonder if some of us are like Diablo. My name is Christian but they call me fearful. My name is Christian, but they call me angry. My name is Christian, but they call me addicted. My name is Christian, but they call me defeated. My name is Christian, but they call me impoverished. My name is Christian, but they call me, they call me depressed. I wonder what the enemy's called you, and you've now taken on the identity of the enemy. Instead of going back to your identity, and I am more than a conqueror through Christ who strengthens me. I might be going through a battle, but this battle is not defeating me. I'm walking in victory because I'm unconquerable because the one that's in me is greater than the one that's in the world. Come on, let's get back to scripture.
We're not going back. Look at Romans 8.35. Let's get some more scripture about this conquering thing. We were built for this, to conquer and not be conquered. And Romans 8.35 says, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Like who? Who is bad enough, strong enough, intimidating enough to separate me from God's love? And then it goes on to list a few things. Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword, shall that separate me from the love of Christ? Because those things, if you don't watch it and you don't, you're not declaring what he's declaring, can begin to separate you from your faith. And the devil will bring people your way. If God is real, why? Why are you going through struggles? Why are you going through a tribulation? Why did he lose that, lo that loved one? Why did you get fired from your job? Why are you struggling financially? Where, where's God now? And I'm telling you, the one that's speaking to you is the devil. And he's trying to separate you from your breakthrough. He's trying to separate you from your victory. He's trying to separate you from your identity. And he's trying to make you a victim. Well, the reality is, the Bible does not say that you wouldn't go through trials, tribulations, difficulty, famines, struggles. I, I want to say, that's part of life. That's why it's called a fight of faith. If there was no struggle, there'd be no fight. The fact that you're in a fight, it proves, come on, it proves, it proves something. That you're, come on, you're a soldier in an army. It's okay. But God is saying, don't you trip. Because even if all that stuff comes against you, there's somebody that loves you. There's somebody that's for you. And they could separate you. Come on, you could get separated from your job. Your wife can leave you. Your money can leave you. Your things can leave you. But what he's saying, after it all leaves you, I'm going to still be there. And the one that's still there is the one that can bring it all back. Man. Oh, man, we're just getting rid of this COVID spirit right now. In the name of Jesus, we command this COVID spirit to leave right now. In the name of the spirit of fear, the spirit of intimidation, the spirit of, inti come on, the spirit of timidity, the spirit, come on, the spirit that's causing us to shut our mouths and not praise God, the spirit that doesn't want us to come together. We come against this spirit of the devil in the name of Jesus. We command this spirit of COVID to go in the mighty name of Jesus. If you're here for the first time, don't trip. We're just real. But you need, you know what? You need somebody to speak to you with conviction. I'm tired of hearing everybody's opinion. Like, I'm getting sick. It makes me throw up. Well, you know what? Well, it's just another bad day. Another 935 people died. And then they'll say, you're next. You're next. If you go into church, for sure you're next. <laughs> well, you know, so funny. We, the devil will tell us that about church, but he'll never tell us that about Lowe's or Walmart. Come on, or protesting. Or making out with somebody you just met. Do you have COVID? No, you don't. Okay, well, come on, baby. <laughs> There's some nasty stuff going on even during the COVID. <laughs> What's an essential thing? I, I, need, the, I need company. You're right. But it's funny how the devil will make you have an excuse for the things you should do. 
You know what's the funniest thing to me? Is someone wearing COVID, I mean, not COVID, <laughs> wearing a mask and shooting up. That's weird. I'm wearing a mask, put down, it's crack. And I see it on the streets every single day. Like we're more scared of COVID than we are our sin. COVID doesn't have the power to steal your soul and send you to hell for eternity and destroy your family, but your sin does. It's time for us to fight against sin the way we've been fighting against COVID and say, I'm, right, I'm going to fight this fight of faith now. I wasn't planning to talk so much about COVID, but I guess the Lord wanted to. But let's keep on reading. Na danger or sword. As, is, as it is written, say it with me, with me, as it is written, for your sake, we are being killed all the day long. We are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. You know what I love about this? This person is down for the cause. Back in the day in the 80s, you said, are you down? I don't, do they say that anymore? I don't know if they say that anymore, but you guys need to update your stuff. When someone's saying they were down, that means they're in no matter what. I'm down. I'm in, man. Are you really down? I'm down. We need some Christians that are down. And when he was saying this, we're set up to be killed, but we're so down, we don't even care. How are you going to kill somebody that resurrects? Do you understand? I'm not even living for this life. I'm living for the other life because this life is very short. It's temporal. One day I'm going to be here. The next day I'm going to be gone. And the only thing that's going to matter is how many souls I reach for the kingdom of God. And I'm going to live for eternity. If you want to kill me to shut me up, I guess that's what you're going to have to do. But you're not going to separate from God because you kill me to be absent from the body. is to be present with the Lord. All you're going to do is do me a favor. Do me a favor, homie. You just imagine. The scariest guy to fight is a guy that's willing to die. He looks like this. <laughs> do what you got to do. <laughs> we need some Christians like that. Devil, threaten what do you want to threaten? You can say what you want to say, but I'm not going to die one day before my time is up. Yeah, I know I got an appointment, but it don't matter. You're not going to accelerate my appointment. I'm not going to be driven by fear. I'm going to be driven by the purpose that God put in my soul. And I'm moving with that, and my purpose will protect me. Well, I could just do anything with do anything in the purpose. The Bible says all things work together for good for those who love God and are called according to his purpose. We had someone the other day. They came to a, fr uh, a fire Friday. And they were going to come for the first time. They were invited to fire Friday. And the wife said this. Man, we can't go because a lot of people going to be there. And you know what? I don't want to get no COVID. And the husband said, our marriage is such a wreck. That's the last thing we need to worry about. I'm going to show up because we need a breakthrough. Because we don't show up, we're not going to have a marriage. We're showing up. So he brought his wife. And they came to Fire Friday. But this is what's happening. Their family had a party that same day. Their family had a party that same day. So either they were going to come to church or they were going to come go to their little family get-together. Well, they decided to come to church. And we got a call. I said, man, we're so glad we came to church because everyone in our whole family at that party got COVID. 
It wasn't a party. It was a COVID party. All I'm saying, when you're in God's will, there's protection. When you're in God's will, there's power. When you're in God's will, there's freedom. When you're in God's will, there, come on, come on, there's deliverance. Now, everywhere else is a whole other story. I mean, you guys understand that. How many believe that? Come on. It's, look, let's finish reading the scripture. You guys get me distracted. I'm just kidding. For your sake... We're being killed all day long. We are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. No. But look at this. Someone say no. No. In all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Come on, we're built, by, we're built for this. You know what he's saying? The devil said what he's going to say. I've heard all the intimidation. The devil has a strategy and a plan against me. He wants to destroy me. He wants to destroy my family. He wants to destroy my purpose, my emotions. He wants to fill my mind with crazy thoughts and torment me night and day, steal my sleep, steal everything that's good. And he's saying, it doesn't matter. No. Because in all these things, I am more, we are more than conquerors through Christ who loves us. You know what God is saying in this scripture? My relationship and your relationship with God is what's going to get you through every single difficulty and challenge that you're in. But God doesn't just want to get you through the challenge. He wants you to get your victory and give it to someone else. The victory doesn't end with me because I become a messenger of victory because my victory is not in my skill. My victory is not in my strength. My victory is in my relationship with a name, with a man named Jesus Christ. He's the one that loves me. He's the one that provides for me. He's the one that protects me. My faith is not in a person that I know on this earth. My faith is in someone that died for me over 2,000 years ago, resurrected from the dead, and conquered every single battle that I'm in. He defeated the enemy. He destroyed the enemy. And now he's given me the victory. So my victory is in Jesus. My faith is in Jesus. Come on. Is there anybody here that's faith in Jesus? You know, there's people counting you out. They're regarding you done. It's over. You've messed up too much. Look at what you did last week. No one believes in you. And the devil just reminds you of every mistake you've ever made. It's too late for your marriage. It's too late for your kids. It's too late for you. You miss your shot. You're too old now. You're too young. You're too this. You're too that. The devil's counted you as a sheep being prepared for slaughter. And you know what God is saying? I don't even care what they're saying. Because I've built you for this. And while they're backed up on you and they're counting you out, I'm counting you in. And, I, and, I, and what God's going to do this is our time to shine like we've never shined. Come on. The church shines in darkness. I'm going to get this. Let's not go down in numbers. Let's grow in numbers. We don't die. We multiply. That's another 80s thing you guys don't know about. Gangsters. We're going to end it with this last statement. Jesus is always leading us to victory. Say it with me. Jesus. Is always leading us to where? Where is Jesus leading us? Where is Jesus leading us? All your job and my job is to follow the lead. And if we follow the lead, where are you going? Victory. We have to start saying stuff like, where are you going? I don't know. You need to start claiming your life. Where are you headed towards? Victory. Where is that at? Wherever Jesus is leading me. 
I just follow his lead, and he always, always leads me to victory. I know where I'm headed, victory. Are you in a battle? I'm in a battle. I'm in a, I'm in a, I'm in a heated battle. I'm in a difficult battle. I'm in the battle of my life. But where are you headed? I know how this all ends. It ends in Love it. So prove it, Pastor. Okay. Second Corinthians 2 Corinthians 2.14. But thanks be to God. Say it with me. Thanks be to God. Look what the scripture says. Who always leads us in victory through Christ. Where are we headed always? Where are we always headed towards? It's not going to end in defeat. It's not going to end in a loss. It's not going to end in a tragedy. It might look so right now, but it's not going to end that way. No matter what's happened to you, God is saying, I'm going to take all of that and we're going to turn it around for a victory. I know it looks really bad right now. Just follow my lead. See, someone right now, you've been letting drugs lead you. You've been letting anger lead you. You've been letting your past lead you. You've been letting reject lead you. You've been letting your ex lead you. You've been letting your trouble lead you. You've been letting your pain lead you. You've been letting your fear lead you. And it's time for you to exchange all of that right now. You've been letting your bitterness lead you. It's time for you to let all that go. And it's time for you to let God lead you. And if you let God lead you, you can just turn your cycle around. We could break that curse that's been over you and your family, and generation after generation, and God is saying all you need, you don't need a new husband, you need a new leader. You don't need a new drug, you don't need a new drink, you don't need a new habit, you need a new leader. And if you let Jesus lead you, he always leads you to victory. And the final verse, it says, it's verse, God uses us to spread his knowledge everywhere like a sweet smelling aroma. You know, all this is saying is not only victory for us, but victory for others. And we spread this knowledge. Someone say spread knowledge. What do we spread? We spread gossip. We spread hate. We spread division. What do we spread? Knowledge of who? We spread knowledge of Christ. I'm a knowledge spreader, not a COVID spreader. Don't get near me because I spread some knowledge over you. Why do I spread knowledge? Because everybody wants to win. Everybody, everybody wants to succeed. They just don't know how. And they're searching and searching and searching. Since we've been kids, we've been trying to find a place to belong. If I could just belong with this group, they'll accept me. And we find no matter what group you're part of, you're going to be left out on the streets or left out eventually. Because none of those groups and none of those things can lead to true victory. Security is an emptiness within you. Some of us have gone from man to man, woman to woman, trying to feed that insecurity in you. But there's only one that can lead you to true victory in your life. And give true meaning to your life. And his name is Jesus. But not only is he going to lead you to victory. He's going to use you as a knowledge spreader. You know what the greatest victories you'll ever have? Is the victories you help others receive. I live my life. You know my greatest testimonies? is not the things I've accomplished. The greatest testimonies I hear is the lives that have been transformed as they've been hearing the knowledge of Jesus Christ. And they said, I came in here addicted. I came in here without my mind, but now I got my mind back. I came in here without my family, but I got my kids back. I came in here lost, but now I have a purpose. I came in here confused, but now I know I have a destiny. I came in here depressed, but now I have some joy. And you know how that happened? Through spreading the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Say it with me, church. We've been built for this. And we've not been created, and we've not been built to be conquered, but we've been built to conquer. 
Are you ready to go out there and conquer some souls for Jesus Christ? Come on. Are we ready to remove the enemy from our family, remove the enemy from our marriages, remove the enemy from our cities and say, no, this city does not belong to you. My, kid, my kids do not belong to you. My marriage does not belong to you. My mind does not belong to you. I command you in the name of Jesus. Get out in Jesus' name. We're taking over in the name of Jesus. If you believe that and you're standing on that, stand up and give God just some real praise. Come on. We thank God He always leads us a triumph. Pastor Robert, please close us out. Yes. Wow, what a great word. How many received that word today? If everybody just remain in their seats until we come to close. We're ending early. 10.09 right now. How'd you do all that in, I don't know, how many minutes? Wow. We're at, we're at like a time lapse right now or something. Before, before we end... There's a couple things really quick. I want to walk you through this week really fast. This week, very important. This week, what's going to happen this week? Wednesday, we're going to open in-person services this Wednesday. This Wednesday, we're opening up, okay? This Wednesday, evangelist John Richardson is coming in. He's an evangelist that goes around all the United States of America, different countries in Africa. He's been going nonstop. He just did a thing, an eight-day revival in Florida. Um, I met John personally when I was in um, high school or in college, my first year, yeah, somewhere out of time. I was going back and forth from California to Florida. And during that time in my life, I was struggling, and um, I was praying for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Just, I just wanted, I wanted everything of God. So I heard um, John Evangelist was coming into town. I went to the service, and that night I got baptized with the Holy Spirit. That night, this, this man of God, he operates in words of knowledge. He will literally, he will literally during worship time, the worship will be going, and he'll just, he'll be worshiping and moving. He'll he, You think we dance, you're going to see one of the greatest dancers ever in the spirits. He's going to run up and down, and I'm telling you, wait till you see John, whole nother level. And what he, love, oh my gosh, Pastor Marco has love, our church has love. Oh, during worship, I haven't seen him in a little while, but I know he hasn't changed. He'll go around during worship. And he'll just be led to that. He'll go around during worship and just hug you and just whisper in your ear a word of knowledge. Oh, it's powerful. Powerful. So we weren't going to do, we were going to do Wednesday night online. And we were talking, we're like, there's no way we could do that. There's no way. This guy literally, who knows what the spirit will lead. This guy's done 14, 15, 20 day revivals. He'll go all night till 2 o'clock in the morning and do it the next day. So he's coming Wednesday. It's going to be amazing. Then Friday, Fire Friday, John Richardson is going to be here. So he's going to be with us Wednesday and Friday. So you don't want to miss it. Wednesday, John Richardson here. We're open in the sanctuary. Friday, we'll be back outside. Fire Friday. Saturday, we're going to have our cleanup day. We would love for you to come on out. How many came to the last cleanup day with us? And I want to give the, the way the, the, the business ministry, what they're doing. I went down baseline because we've been focusing on baseline. I went there two days ago. This is the cleanest I've ever seen baseline in 16 years. I had to slow down. I said, what's going on? The streets are looking so much better. So this Saturday, how do you sign up for this stuff? Go on the app and you'll see cleaner. They go on the app. The last thing, next Sunday, someone say next Sunday. We have discipleship classes, our growth track. How many by a show of hands... You have not been through our growth track here at The Way. Raise your hand if you haven't been through our growth classes, discipleship classes. Raise your hands. Okay, I see all those hands. Next week, you can start your growth track. We have it at 9 a.m. class. And also, people have been calling the church and say, when are, when are you bringing back freedom at The Way, our inner healing and deliverance? Next Sunday at 1 o'clock are freedom classes. So if you're saying, man, I need some freedom in an area. I need inner healing. Or man, I know someone who needs inner healing. That's going to be next Sunday at 1. So let's look at the week really fast. Wednesday. What's Wednesday? Let's see if you're paying attention. What's Wednesday? Evangelist John Richardson. What's Wednesday? What's Friday? Fire Friday, John Richardson. What's Saturday? Cleanup day. And what's Sunday? Church. Yeah, I didn't say church. We have church. I heard church. And we have discipleship classes. Now, before we end, we want to give an opportunity. Maybe you're online and you're watching right now. Maybe you're at a home right now as well. You're at your job place. And you're here right now in this auditorium. 
If you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, this is your day. One of the most heartbreaking news I heard was this week with Chilo and Margaret. I cried and cried. He lost his 26-year-old son, one of our ushers, his son, 26. He played baseball at Chafee, nicest kid. Oh, man. 26, got a head-on collision. When I got the text, I didn't believe it. I started calling some of Chilo's best friends. I said, please tell me this text is not true. Is it true that Chilo's son just died? I just got a text. Someone please confirm this is true. One of his best friends called me. He goes, Pastor Rob, it's true. His son has passed away, head on collision. The girlfriend is in critical condition. There was a baby in the back seat. The baby is doing well right now in Jesus' name. The baby is doing well. That was heart-wrenching, heartbreaking. And one of the coolest things, Pastor Mark would talk to Chilo, even I think a week ago or a little time ago, Alex, the son, he rededicated his life to Jesus just recently. This week he did it. This three days, three days before the accident, three days before the accident, he rededicated his life. Why am I saying this, you guys? We're not guaranteed tomorrow. We're not guaranteed 45 minutes from now. Again, one of our members' son, 29, went to bed, has a heart attack. He dies. They find him dead the next morning. You guys, we're not guaranteed. But here's a guarantee. All those who place their faith in Jesus, one day we will go to heaven in glory with God. That's a fact. Every person who receives Jesus, not a religion, not a church, everyone who puts their faith in Jesus will go to heaven. Here's a second fact about eternity. For every person who does not place their faith in Jesus, they go to a place called hell. And that's a fact as well for eternity. I'm going to count to three. You're watching this online here in this auditorium. I'm going to count to three. If you say, Pastor, I want to give my life to Jesus. I want to be forgiven of all of my sins. I want to make sure if I die today that I would go straight to heaven. Pastor, I've been... I've been messing around. I, I just want a clean start today. I want a fresh start with God. That's me. When I count to three all over this auditorium, online, get ready to raise your hands. What are you raising your hands towards again? Again, I want Jesus. I want a new start. I want Jesus to forgive me of all my sins. I want to make sure if I die today, I would go to heaven. On a count of three, don't let nothing hold your hand down. One, two. Three, raise your hands right now. Raise your hands. I see a hand there. See a hand there. See a hand there. I see a hand there. 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 I see a hand way in the back. I see a hand right there. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, yeah. All those who just raised your hands, I want you to come forward and we're gonna lead you today in a prayer of salvation. Come on down. If they give them a round of applause, church, give them a round of applause. Come, come, come. Come, come, all the back, come. This is your day. If you're online, you're right there at your house right now. You can just stand up at your house. We're going to lead you into prayer right now. Come on, church, keep on clapping. They're still coming. Come, come, come. Wow, we got a, a whole family over here. Come on, church, get around. Whole family's coming up. Come, come, come. Come, come, squeeze over here, squeeze over here. Wow, this is powerful. Come on, look, come over here. Yeah, yeah, come, come, come. Wow, we're almost running out of altar workers, our first service. Look at all these people getting saved today. This is beautiful. Come on down, young man. You coming? Yeah, come, 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 come. Come, come. Someone take a picture of this, man. Our first Sunday back. Look at all these souls getting saved. Take a picture of this. Our first Sunday back. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight people. Give the Lord a big shout of praise. We got two more coming down. Yeah, twenty-nine thirty, right here. Twenty-nine thirty. Yes, come on down. This is your day. Oh. 
I don't know what's going to happen here Wednesday, man. It's going to get crazy here on Wednesday. You better early get a seat. Woo, it's going to be crazy. It's good to have our pastors from our family church in Medford, Oregon. Give it up for Deanna and their team. They brought some of their team here. Good to see you, Deanna. Love you guys. Pastor Paul in Medford, Oregon. Everyone bow their head and close their eyes. Everyone bow their head and close their eyes. You're at a watch party right now. This is your turn too. You're at a watch party. Just stand up right there in that watch party, that house. Say this prayer with us. If you're at your seats right now, you're saying, man, I didn't go down there. I should have went. It's okay. Just say that prayer right where you're at. Some of you guys, you're right there in the audience. You're in the, you're in the auditorium. You say, man, I just need to rededicate. I need a fresh start. Say this prayer with us and watch what God does. Every head by every eyes closed. Here we go. Repeat after me. Say, Jesus, I repent and I receive forgiveness of all the sins that I have done. Jesus, I believe you died on the cross. Jesus, come into my heart. Become my Lord and Savior. Set me free from all my bad habits, all my addictions. And I forgive everyone who has hurt me and let me down. I forgive them, Lord. And I receive your forgiveness today. I'm a new person. I'm on my way to heaven. I'm a child of God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Church, give all these a round of applause and online.